Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I asked ChatGPT to explain in simple terms how to set up Anki specifically for medical school and I was blown away by the results. I struggled so much when I was trying to set up Anki before medical school because I had no idea what I was doing. I was just randomly watching different tutorials trying to figure it out and ChatGPT really got it right. If I had followed these steps it would have been a lot simpler and I would have wasted a lot less time on it. So hopefully this is helpful for you guys. Let's go through it step by step. So number one, you're going to want to download and install Anki. So the Anki website is listed in the description of this video. So you can go ahead and click that link and figure out which version is going to be compatible with your operating system. After you've successfully downloaded Anki, and now you're going to want to create an Anki web account. This is super, super important if you're a medical student because you want to be able to sync your cards across all of your different devices. So for me personally, since I'm in my third year and I'm on clerkships right now, I like to have Anki on my phone, my iPad, and my computer. So that way, no matter where I am, I always have access to a device that has my Anki cards on it, and I can just sync them up and do Anki on those little moments when you just have some free time when you're in the hospital or wherever you happen to be. Once you have your account on AnkiWeb, now it's time to understand the basics of how these flashcards work. So you're going to have decks that you can create or you can download different free decks and I'll recommend a couple of those later in the video. But basically these decks are going to contain certain collections of your flashcards. So I personally like to set it up by the class that I'm in. So if I'm on the renal unit, for example, I'll have renal cards and cardio and microbiome biology, etc. So that's going to be your main way of organizing your cards. Then you also want to understand that there's different note types, which allows you to do different things with your cards. So for example, you could have a basic note type where there's just a front and a back. So more like a traditional flashcard, but you can also have a closed note type, which allows you to do a fill in the blank. And this is a really, really popular one among medical students. Okay, so now we're on to step four, using add-ons. This is probably one of the more complicated steps. So I would just recommend doing as many as you want for right now, and you can always add more of them later. So there's a couple popular add-ons that most medical students are going to find helpful. They're listed on the screen here as well as in the description of the video. So take a look at those and figure out which ones you want to get. And I personally would recommend all four that ChatGPT listed here. Um, I think it's a really great place to start because it allows you to do a lot of the functions within Anki that are really helpful for medical students specifically. Okay, so now that you've made it past the add-ons, now we're actually to the fun part, which is figuring out which pre-made decks you want to import into your Anki web. So I think that for pre-med and medical students, there's two main ways that they find these decks. Number one would be visiting Anki web and figuring out which decks you want to download from there and just downloading it directly from Anki. The other way is through Reddit. So a lot of people will post their um, pre-made decks on Reddit and they're free for any student to use. So I think that that's a really great place to start looking. I would recommend searching, you know, MCAT, Anki decks. That's a really great place to start if you're a pre-med. Um, if you're a medical student, the Anking deck is pretty much the gold standard. There's a couple others that are really helpful as well, but starting on Reddit is a really good place to find these decks. Okay, so now that we've figured out which pre-made decks we want to use, it's time to figure out how to create your own cards. So I think this is really helpful in situations where your school has lecture material that doesn't necessarily line up with the content that is being presented in the pre-made decks that you've already downloaded. So in the interest of saving time, I try to use the pre-made decks whenever possible. Creating your own cards is really time intensive, and so you really only want to do it if there's no other option. 
The other thing I would say, ChatGPT gave a fantastic recommendation here, which is to keep your cards really simple. If you're going to make them yourself, you want to really focus on one thing per card and not start stacking a lot of different pieces of information onto the same card because you want to be able to go through these cards quickly and go through them many times. That's sort of the idea behind the space repetition that Anki gives you. So you want to keep it really simple and then using images and mnemonics is so so important this for me is the number one thing that helps me make Anki a productive part of my day so visual aids mnemonics that stuff should absolutely go in your cards so the next step is going to be organizing your decks and your tags. So I personally like to use decks a lot more than tags, but I think this is personal preference and it really kind of is up to you how you want to organize things. I personally think it's really helpful to have a lot of decks within larger decks. So I'll have a big sort of overarching deck like cardio. And then within that, I can have, you know, week one, week two, week three, you know, all the different weeks of the course and then within week one I'll have the first set of lectures and so it just kind of gets more and more granular from there and I think the nice thing about making a lot of sub decks is it allows you to be really specific about how you're spending your time on Anki. A lot of times I personally run out of time to do all my Anki cards. It's just not possible to do them all. So I think having a lot of sub decks really gives you flexibility in choosing what you want to study at a given time. And that's really, really important to be able to prioritize certain things at different times when you have an exam coming up or a quiz or whatever. Maybe you have more time over summer break and you want to get more things done. It's just really hectic all the time as a medical student. And so you want to give yourself as much flexibility as possible. And I think a great way to do that is being really specific with the sub decks that you're making within your larger decks. So now that you have all your decks, you can set up your review schedule for those decks. I would recommend doing Anki every single day. I personally try to do Anki every single day, and it really just helps to try to keep up with the material as much as possible because it's much harder to relearn something if you've forgotten it. So the goal is not to forget it in the first place. So in order to do this, you can just go to Tools, Preferences, Scheduling, and then you can go in there and customize how many cards you want to do per day and things like that. All right, and the next step I think is probably the most important step for medical students, syncing across all of your devices. So definitely make sure that you log into your Anki Web account and get it set up on your phone, your laptop, and your tablet. All right, and now the last step is just to start doing some Anki and figuring out what's going to work for you and what's not going to work for you. I think Anki does a great job of giving you data on how you're doing, and you can also just talk to peers, figure out what other students are doing, adopt different strategies, and see if they work for you. I think everybody kind of uses Anki differently, and I personally changed a lot between the first time I started using Anki at the beginning of med school and using it now. So I hope this guide was helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any additional questions I can answer and hit the subscribe button if you want to see some more pre-med and medical school content. Have a great day you guys!